good morning students today we are going to discuss chapter 8 of your isc plus 2 history book the name of the chapter is decolonization in asia and africa and in this chapter we will discuss the decolonization in china ghana and kenya in the first module of this chapter we will be discussing about the decolonization or independence struggle of china before we start with our discussion we'll understand the objectives of the topic the objectives of the topic are to understand the decolonization in asia here we will be discussing about the decolonization process in china we'll discuss the role of the kuomintang party and the communist party chiang kai shek era causes of the communist victory the establishment of people's republic and its initial problems and the hundred flowers campaign which took place in 1957 political and economic development the great leap forward the cultural revolution and the contribution of mao zedong first we'll go through the new terms of the topic the first term is opium wars the opium wars were two wars waged between king dynasty and western powers in the mid 19th century the first opium war was fought in 1839 till 1942 it was fought between the kings and the great britain and it was triggered by the dynasty's campaign against the british merchant who sold opium to the chinese merchants so in short we can say that the opium wars were fought between the british and the qing dynasty over the issue of selling of opium in china the second opium war was fought between the kings and britain and france in 1856 to 1860 in each war the european forces used modern military technology to easily defeat the qing forces and compel the government to grant favorable tariffs trade concessions and territory whereas in the first opium war it was only the british which were involved against the qing dynasty in the second opium war along with the british merchants the french merchants also joined and the combined army of these powerful countries compelled the qing dynasty to give them trade concessions for example the tariff tax which was imposed on imported goods was reduced on the opium which was coming from england and france to china the next term is taping rebellion the taping rebellion was a revolt against the qing dynasty in china fought with religious conviction over regional economic conditions and lasting from 1850 to 1864 the taping rebellion eventually failed however and led to the death of more than 20 million people against the deteriorating economic condition of china the people of china started a rebellion against the qing dynasty which was famously called as the taping rebellion the next word is boxer rising the boxer rebellion boxer uprising or yihutan movement was an anti imperialism anti foreign and anti christian uprising in china between 1899 and 1901 towards the end of the qing dynasty so by the boxer rising the chinese first time stood against the foreign power they started this movement against christianity and against all the european powers which were ruling on china the next word is kmt the kuomintang often referred to in english as nationalist party of china or chinese nationalist party is a major political party in taiwan based in the city of taipei so kmt is the name of major political party in china and it is famously called as the kuomintang party the next word is communism a system in which goods are owned in common and are available to all as needed This theory advocates elimination of private property. Any economic system which favored that every thing should be under the control of government and there is no space for private property is called as communism. 
The next word is hundred flowers campaign. The hundred flowers campaign, also termed the hundred flowers movement, was a period from nineteen fifty six to fifty seven in People's Republic of China, during which the Communist Party of China encouraged citizens to express openly their opinions of the communist regime. So, in short. it was a period of freedom which was given by the government to the common people so that they can express their views about the communist rule the next term is great leap forward the great leap forward or the second five year plan of the people's republic of china was an economic and social campaign led by the chinese communist party that is ccp from 1958 to 1962 the chief changes that came in the life of the people by the great leap forward was that the rural chinese people included the incremental introduction of mandatory agricultural cultivation that means it was necessary for the people of china to do collectivization of agriculture that means they have to do collective farming and the whole land belong to the government the peasants were supposed to work on that and in return they used to get a fixed salary the next word is red guards red guards led a major uprising known as cultural revolution whose goal was to establish a society where peasants and workers were equal short we can say that red guard was a army which helped in bringing socialism in china Now let us discuss the decolonization process of China. Firstly, we are going to discuss the entry of Western powers in China. In the early part of the 19th century, China kept itself aloof from the rest of the world. It maintained the traditional way of living peacefully since the Manchus took over in 1640s. But in the mid 19th century, the Europeans started knocking at doors of China for commercial privileges. So as Japan used to live a very isolated life in uh, Asia the similar lifestyle was adopted by the Chinese their government followed the policy of isolation but in the mid 19th century the european settlers which included the french the british and the portuguese they started entering in china for selling their surplus goods in the chinese market The Portuguese first established themselves at Macau, then the Dutch at Formosa, and the British at Canton, taking advantage of the opium wars for long three years from 1839 to 1842. The British forced China to hand over Hong Kong and compelled her to grant trade facilities at certain ports. Other western powers followed the path of Britain and gradually Chinese territories were parceled out among the European powers. So in the mid of 19th century the big European powers entered in China to get the commercial benefits. It were the Portuguese who first established their colonies at Macau then followed by the people of Netherland and finally by the British people. but the british people took the maximum commercial benefit from china you can see the map of china on your screen this part macau was the first place which was inhabited by a foreign power it was the portuguese who came and ruled over macau then hong kong was captured by the british so many foreign countries came and captured different parts of china the chinese process of decolonization started with the taping and the boxer rebellions let's understand the area of taping rebellion with the help of a map students here you can see the orange color it depicts the areas of china which were under the control of britain The green area here the light green color shows the area occupied by the french forces the dark brown color show the german occupation over china the purple color show the rule of uh, japan over chinese territories this yellow color shows the presence of russians so this area was under the influence of uh, russia 
and this was the main area of the taping rebellion taping and boxer rebellion and aftermath during 1850 to 64 a movement known as taping rebellion started and spread all over southern china it was partly a religious and partly a political reform movement ultimately the movement was suppressed by regional armies this was the beginning of the process of asserting independence of regional rulers from the central government the process of independence struggle of china started with the taping rebellion where the people of south china rebelled against the central government but it was ruthlessly crushed by the regional armies in 1894 95 china was defeated by japan and was forced to surrender huge territories the protest against foreign encroachment and exploitation was seen in the boxer rising which took place in 1890 to 1900 the second rebellion was started in china against the foreign imperialism in 1898 and that was called as the boxer rising this was started when china was defeated badly by japan the boxer rising became a violent anti foreign movement but the chinese were defeated by an international army the foreigners then dictated the terms of the settlement the boxer rising was the first ever rising which was against the foreign powers because earlier the taping rebellion was started by the provincial rulers against the central government the boxer rising was easily crushed by an international army and the foreigners after defeating china dictated the terms of the settlement that means they forced chinese government to accept whatever they wanted from chinese government the manchu empress tazu had to pay compensation for the damage of the property of the foreigners the boxer movement thus offered a genuine attempt to save the integrity of china in the early years of the 20th century thousands of chinese students went abroad for educational purposes the students came from abroad with radical ideas and wanted to westernize china by overthrowing the old descent manchu dynasty so the students who have come from abroad after getting highly qualified they wanted to make china more modern and they also wanted that the traditional rule of manchu dynasty should come to an end and in this area the lead was given by sun yat sen who was a doctor of medicine he skillfully turned the anti manchu agitation into a republican movement so this person sun yat sen who was a doctor of medicine he wanted to end or uproot the manchu rule and wanted to replace it with republican form of movement or republican form of government where the head of the state should be chosen by the people so under the influence of the radicals which were led by sun yat sen the revolution of 1911 took place in china the government responded to the call of the radicals called a national assembly in 1910 and offered sweeping concessions including constitutional government of the parliament but the supporters were not willing to compromise with the manchu autocracy in order to make a compromise with the radicals government called a national assembly in 1910 and also offered many concessions to the radicals but radicals were not ready to accept the autocratic or the dictatorial rule of the manchu dynasty in 1948 supporters of sun yat sen revolted against the manchus and captured nanking which was made the capital of the provisional republic so the radicals resorted to action and the followers of sun yat sen captured nanking and declared this place as the capital of provisional republic here provisional republic stands for the temporary government of republican form of government they made sun yat sen as the president of republic in february 1912 the manchu emperor abdicated the throne and the republican proclaimed over whole of china as the radicals have made their movement very strong so the manchu emperor himself abdicated or left his throne in 1912 in the month of february
and the republic was proclaimed over the whole of china that means the complete china came under the control of sun yat sen and the radicals it declared that china would be a republican government let us understand the influence of the kuomintang party from 1928 to 1937 this area here depicts japanese control over china this was a area where japan had sponsored a puppet state in 1935 and this area considered shantung shanxi suan and chihar then this area students with the dark brown color shows the effective control of nationalist government or kuomintang party from 1927 to 1938 the area with light brown color shows the nanking control from 1929 to 1934 and this area here shows the control of kmt or the national government from 1935 to 1937 and these were the areas of kuichiko and kuentong so here we are showing you that the influence area of the kmt party so basically this was the influence area of the kmt party or you can say the nationalist party and these were the areas which were independent like yunnan uh, was independent then the uh, sinking was also not under the control of kmt party so here there was more influence of the communist party Now let us discuss the rule of Yuan Shikai who was the successor of Sun Yat-sen. Sun Yat-sen resigned as president in favor of Yuan Shikai, an able general and a shrewd politician. With the support of the army, Yuan ruled as a military dictator, upsetting the expectations of Sun Yat-sen. So Sun Yat-sen was having high expectations from his follower Yuan Shikai which he was unable to fulfill as he only wanted to consolidate his position with the help of foreign powers Yuan started propaganda in favor of restoration of monarchy and establishment of new dynasty as students i have already told you that yuan was not a good successor he failed to live up to the expectation of sun yat sen He wanted to convert the Chinese political system into a monarchy again. That means he wanted to declare himself the emperor of China and wanted to start a new dynasty in China. This led to protest and insurrection in southern provinces where republican sentiments were strong. As in the southern part of China, the people were more inclined towards republican form of government so they strongly opposed the view of yuan that china should again become a monarchy state matters were heading towards a crisis which was however averted by the sudden death of yuan shikai in 1916 it was looking like that a civil war could start in china between the followers of yuan who supported monarchy and the republicans but however it was avoided by sudden death of yuan shikai in 1916 now let us discuss what was the role of japan in decolonization process of china china had no direct relation in the first world war which started in 1914 but japan declared 21 demands in china calculated to make china a japanese protectorate students as i have told you earlier in this module that japan defeated china so japan put forward 21 demands to china and declared that china would be a japanese protectorate here japanese protectorate means that china could not take any foreign decision for its external policies it has to depend on japan and in case any country would attack on china it would be japanese who would protect china but it was not liked by the chinese people however england france and russia signed a secret treaty with japan and this compelled the big powers to accept japan's claim on chinese territories 
as Japan was supplying the requisite material in the First World War, which was required by the Allied countries. So the Allied countries, including England, France and Russia, accepted Japanese control over China. In the Versailles Treaty, Shenzhen province of China was under the German control and it was now given to Japan. This news produced violent explosion of popular feeling in China. Anti-Japan agitation thus flared up. As the province of Shenzhen, which was originally to be under Germany, was given to Japan by the secret treaty. So in China, the violent explosion broke against Japan. Now let us discuss the role of the Kuomintang Party and the Communists in the freedom struggle of China. The fate of China was then in the hands of Kuomintang Party or National Peoples founded by Sun Yat-sen. His ideas were influential but he had very little powers outside Kanto area. Sun Yat-sen wanted to reorganize KMT or the Kuomintang Party with the help of Russians. Michael Borodin, an able Russian diplomat, transformed the KMT party into a highly organized party of disciplined members. So KMT, when it was founded under Sun Yat-sen, has very little potential, but with the help of the Russians, it became a disciplined party which helped in the freedom struggle of China. The membership of the party was now thrown open to all including the communists provided they accept the KMT principles. Sun Yat-sen's main principles were nationalism, democracy and people's livelihood. Sun Yat gained enormous respect as an intellectual statesman and revolutionary leader. When he died in 1925, little progress had been done towards achieving these three principles. So, Sun Yat-sen was the first revolutionary of the Chinese freedom struggle. After Sun Yat-sen's death in 1925, Chiang Kai-shek became the leader of the KMT party. He completed his military education from Tokyo Military College. He also went to Russia to study military development. During the time of Chiang Kai-shek, new Soviet Russian government helped and guided the KMT party in the hope that nationalist China would become friendly towards Russia. But though Chiang had close relations with the Soviet Russia, he was not a communist. When Chiang Kai-shek became the leader of KMT party, this party was helped by Russian government in hope that Russia and China would become close friends and China would also become a communist country. Though Chiang was having very cordial relations with Soviet Russia, but he was not a communist. He did not want that China should also become a communist country like Russia. During 1927, Chiang felt that the communists became very popular inside the KMT party. The pro-communist nationalist army set up a parallel government at Hankou and captured Nanking. Chiang now decided to get rid of the communists and started the purification movement. As China was helping the KMT party, so there emerged many communists inside the KMT party. And now Chiang wanted to end the communism from KMT party. So he started a movement called as the purification movement. It means that all the communists should be thrown out of KMT party. Thus, he purged the KMT of the communists and the radicals in course of which the communists were massacred. So Chiang Kai-shek started killing those people who were either communist or belonged to the radical ideology. He cut off all his relation with the Russian communists in 1927 and set up a nationalist government at Nanking. In short, he made it clear to the Russian government that China would not accept communism as the form of government. To purge the communists, Chiang Kai-shek carried out five expeditions against the communists between 1930 to 1934. So from the time 1930 to 1934, Chiang Kai-shek started killing those peoples who were the communists. Mao Zedong, 
now became the leader of the communist being chased by chiang the communist members took shelter in the mountains between huan and kiangxi provinces and concentrated in building up red army so red army was founded by the communist in order to save themselves from chiang kai shek army Though the communists were hiding themselves in the mountains but very soon the base was surrounded by KMT army for final destruction of the communist and the leaders Mayo who was the leader of the communist then realized that only chance of survival was to break through Chiang's defense With all the communist forces Mayo started memorable and historical long march of more than 6000 miles to join the other communist forces of northwest the communist party started their long march in 1934 to 1935 here you can see the yellow area which was under the control of japan like the area of munchuko a puppet government korea and rehe and here also taiwan and with the green color you can see the long march of the communist which started from nancheng here and from here it reached to a place called yenam and these were the different places from where the communist have come from they have come from the nanjing and this was the route that they have covered so this was the historical long march of the communist and it was a unique long march in the world history of communists the communist had to cross 18 mountain ranges 24 rivers and had to proceed through heavy fighting thousands thus perished on the way that means they were dead on the way and finally 20000 survivors reached the province of yenan where new base was organized This long march is one of the epics of history and proved to be a brilliant piece of communist propaganda. So in the history of communism, the long march of the Chinese communist was one of the remarkable event. Retreat of Chiang Kai-shek. In 1937, Japan's attack temporarily unified both the communist and the KMT party. They jointly offered resistance against Japan. but with the collapse of japan in the second world war quarrel came to a head in the long struggle between the nationalist kmt and the communist the communist compelled kmt and its supporters to leave the mainland of china and to take refuge at formosa a place which was protected by united states of america so for a short period of time due to japanese aggression on china the communist and kmt made a compromise with each other and they jointly faced japan but after that the communists compelled kmt to leave the mainland for them now after this the chinese civil war was started between chiang kai shek and mao zedong the victorious communist party who has defeated the kmt party then proclaimed china as people's republic of china on 1st october 1949 with mao zedong as the chairman of the republic that means china declared a republican form of government where head of the state was to be elected by the people of the country in the civil war which was started between the kmt or the nationalist party and the communist party the communist were victorious this map shows the area of influence of both the group Here this area shows the nationalist China which was under the control of KMT or Kuomintang party and this area with the yellow color shows People's Republic of China which was declared by the communist party So here we can see that after defeating the KMT party the communist party declared China as People's Republic of China Now let us discuss what were the reasons that the communist won over the KMT party. The first reason was the KMT and the nationalist army faced the main attack of Japanese invasion and the strain of long resistance. As a result, the government became weak and the army became weaker. 
The depletion of effective military power led to consequent increase in the relative strength of the communist. So behind the victory of communist there was a big hand of Japanese attack on China which made the Chinese military or the KMT army less powerful and it depleted most of the advanced war materials from them. Another reason for the victory of communist over KMT party was that Chiang Kai-shek and the KMT party was discredited for corruption and inefficiency of its officialdom. That means the leader of the KMT party including their main leader Chiang Kai-shek were corrupt. There were widespread bribery and the top ranking officials adopted all means which would benefit them. Chiang was not prepared to offend his supporters in any way. Chiang Kai-shek was knowing about the weakness of his government. He was knowing that many of his officials were corrupt. But he was not ready to punish those who were supporting him. And that was the biggest mistake of Chiang Kai-shek. The third reason for the communist success was the KMT party depended more and more on the support of landlords and propertied class. They looked after the interest of the industrialists, bankers and landowners and took no initiative to organize mass support. So basically the common people were not happy with the rule of Chiang Kai-shek and naturally they supported the communist rule. On the other side, the communists won the hearts of the people by their zeal and sincerity for clean government. Their troops were orderly, disciplined and never looted the properties of civilians or outraged women. Naturally, the people were convinced that the communists were sincerely concerned for the welfare of the people. Thus, the success of communists was due to the weakness of the KMT. The leaders of the communist party they never looted the people and they promised that they would bring welfare programs in China. And this was the reason that the communists finally won over the KMT party. There was establishment of People's Republic in China by the communists. And now we will discuss that how it was established and what were the problems it had to face in its initial Years. After the communist victory over KMT in 1949, Mao Zedong set about rebuilding the shattered China. The problems facing the new government were numerous and complex. The country was devastated after a long civil war and war with Japan. No doubt the communists got victory over the KMT party, but it was not easy for them to rule in the initial years because the economy of China was completely deteriorated due to long civil war between the KMT and the Communist Party. And also because Japan has very badly defeated the Chinese army and China has to pay war indemnity for the damages of Japan. Roads, railways, canals and dikes had been destroyed and there were chronic food shortage. The industry was backward, agriculture was inefficient and incapable of feeding the poverty-stricken masses. Mayo got the support of peasants and a section of middle class who were disgusted by the miserable performance of the KMT party. So there were a number of problems that Mayo Zedong had to face. And the only positive point was that, that he was having the support of the peasants and the middle class of China. Mayo began experiments by a process of trial and error to find out which would work in China and where a special Chinese approach was necessary. He first wanted to introduce reforms in the agricultural field. So the process of reconstruction Chinese economy was started by Mao Zedong with the process of experimenting in every field and first target was to bring reforms in agricultural sector. So let us discuss the agrarian policy of Mao Zedong. Lands were thus taken from the big land owners and redistributed among peasants with violence in places. 
So the land was taken from the big landlords and it was given to the small peasants and in some way the government had also to face violence activities. The peasants were persuaded to join together in the cooperative farms. That means collective farming was done where actually the land belonged to the government and the peasants had to work over that land and they used to get equal salary for their work. By 1956, about 95% peasants were in cooperative with joint ownership of the farm and the equipment. After bringing reforms in the agriculture sector, the next target of Mao Zedong was to bring reforms in the industrial sector. So the next step, the communist government nationalized most of the business. That means all the business sector would be under the control of the government. In 1953, government undertook a scheme of five-year plan for the development of heavy industries like iron, steel and chemical etc. The Russians came forward to help the new government with cash, equipments and advisors. As Russia also sport communism, in fact Russia was the founder of the ideology of communism. So Russian government helped the communist government with money and material both. There was no doubt that under Mayo the country gradually recovered from the ravages of war. Very soon inflation, that means Hike in the prices came under control and country became wealthier. Side by side, small factories were set up in the countryside, that means in the rural areas, to provide tools to the peasantry. The next work done by Mayo Zedong was to start the 100 flowers campaign. The industrialization had created new class of technicians and engineers in the country. The party cadres started to believe that this new class of experts would threaten their authority. The government now decided that open discussion regarding the problems might improve relations between the party cadres and the experts or the intellectuals. Let a hundred flowers bloom and hundred schools of thought content, Mayo said, and he called for constructive criticism. So hundred flower campaign was started by Mayo Zedong in 1957 in China, which calls that the people could express their views freely about the communist government. If they found that there were some drawbacks or weakness, they could very easily express before the government, which usually is against the communist form of government. By the 100 flower campaign of 1957, Mayo wanted to know about the criticism of the government but he got more than he anticipated. Means many people expressed their views about the drawbacks of the communist government. The critics then attacked the cadres for incompetence and over enthusiasm, the government for over centralization and the communist party for being undemocratic. Some even suggested that opposition parties should be allowed. Now Mayo called off the campaign and clamped down his critics. He now insisted that his policies were right. The critics of Mayo told the government that opposition parties should also be there in China and government should give more and more power to the states, which was not liked by Mayo Zedong. So he called off his 100 flower campaign and said that his policies were right and he would not accept the role of any opposition party in China. Now let us discuss the political development done by Mao Zedong in China. After the defeat of KMT party, the Communist Party under Mao captured China which became People's Republic in 1949. So China was declared as Republican form of government in 1949. The constitution of 1950 was finally adopted in 1954. The new constitution provided that National People's Congress the final authority for legislation. The work of making laws was handed over to the Chinese legislature which was officially given the name of National People's Congress. The members of National People's Congress were elected for four years by the people 
over 18 years. That means the principle of universal adult franchise was adopted in China and every person who gained the age of 18 or above 18 had right to choose the members of National People's Congress. The State Council and the Chairman of Republic were to be elected by the Congress, that is their legislature. Their function was to see that the laws were carried out and the administration of the country went ahead. The State Council chose the political bureau or politburo which took all important decisions. So all the important decisions were taken by the political bureau which was often called in China as politburo. The system was dominated by the Communist Party whose members could contest any election. For the first time, China got a strong central government and this system more or less remained unchanged. So the first time, China declared itself a communist government where only one party was there that was the Communist Party of China. And it established a strong central government where states were having less powers. And over the years, China has adopted the same system. There is no opposition party in China and it is a communist country. Now let us discuss economic development that China made under the leadership of Mao Zedong. After the communist victory over KMT party, Mao Zedong started rebuilding the economy with all efforts. In the late 50s, China's relation with Russia cooled down. That means it was not what it used to be before. So there was a swift change in the relation between China and Russia from the best allies of each other, the relation became normal as China was having relation with any other country. So naturally, the Russian economic aid was also reduced to China. Mao Zedong now introduced the Great Leap Forward program by which communism was adopted to meet the Chinese condition and situation with the idea of decentralization of power. Whereas strong central government was established by the Chinese constitution, now in order to make his country more progressive in the economic sphere, Mao Zedong brought some changes. He adopted a new program called as Great Leap Forward. By this, the powers were distributed amongst the provinces also. In the Great Leap Forward, the first step was the introduction of communes where people ran their own collective farms and performed the function of local government under an elected council. So by setting up of communes, Mao Zedong gave freedom to the local people to govern themselves. In the commune, each family received a share of profits from the sale of produced so that there should be complete harmony between the members of the commune. In the second step, emphasis on the big industries was reduced. Instead, small factories were set up to supply tools and machinery to the agriculturalist. Under the management of the communist, different public works like building of roads, construction dams, reservoirs and other works were undertaken. In the initial stage, it appeared to be a failure for many reasons. In order to reconstruct the economy of China under the program of Great Leap Forward, Mao Zedong gave more importance to the development of small-scale industries. Moreover, he also started many public welfare programs by which the common people got employment. In the beginning, it was looking like that the program is going to be a failure. But in the long run, it became successful because both agriculture and industrial production increased substantially. It was decided that China would remain an agricultural and the economy would be labor-oriented to enable the country to avoid the growing unemployment problem. Since the major problem of the Chinese government was unemployment, so in order to tackle this problem, it was decided by Mao Zedong that the country would give more importance to the agriculture sector where more and more people could be engaged. 
In order to make China a more progressive country, Mao Zedong then started the Cultural Revolution. The Cultural Revolution of 1966 to 69, Mao Zedong always tried to keep the revolution and the great leap on the pure Marxist Leninist course. But there were number of leaders who wanted an expert managerial plan push forward industrialization on Russian model instead of relying on the cadres but mayo never agreed with this view and condemned the russian policy for a number of reasons so whereas mayo wanted to stick to his policy which was based on the communist ideology of lenin there were many cadres in the party who wanted that expert knowledge or the managerial expertness of the russian should also be included in the chinese government thus there was a great public debate about what course to be followed mayo launched a campaign to see the revolution in this great cultural revolution mayo appealed to the masses In 1964 Mayo claimed that literary and artistic circles had behaved for the last 15 years as arrogant bureaucrats had not been identified with the workers and the peasants and had not reflected socialist revolution and socialist construction In 1964 he also criticized the bourgeois that is the middle class authorities in the universities In 1966 Certain party leaders of Peking and their journals were attacked for their pro-capitalist views. During Cultural Revolution, Mao found it that many of the bureaucrats or the high officials were not liking the peasants and the common workers. He also criticized the working class, the middle class who were working in the universities and also criticized those leaders in the party who were in favor of capitalism in this movement the red guards which mostly consisted of students played an important role they were provided free rail transport to move anywhere in the country free food and free lodging in schools and colleges they toured the country arguing mayo's case while schools and later factories were closed down it was an incredible propaganda exercise in which mayo tried to renew revolutionary fervor and he asked the people to adhere to the communist ideology teachers professionals local officials and others were their targets as a result millions of people were disgraced and detained by 1967 the extremist among the red guards were out of control and mayo had to call the army to restore order many were arrested and even executed for committing excesses at the party conference in april 1969 the cultural revolution was declared to be ended the cultural revolution was ended by mayo zedong when he found that many intellectuals have become against the ideology of communism unfortunately it brought chaos and something close to civil war The student masses physically attacked anybody in authority not just critics of Mayo. The cultural revolution thus caused great disruption, ruined millions of lives and probably held up China's economic development by 10 times. So if cultural revolution had not been in China, most probably China had been developed 10 times more as it has developed today. So lastly we will discuss the contribution of Mao Zedong towards decolonization of China the contribution of Mao Zedong was great in chinese history a scattered china became united by his great efforts the famous red army of china was creation of mao his policy of five year plan and the great leap forward policy placed china on a stable economic and financial condition through five year plan he gave more importance to the agricultural as well as to the industrial sector by great leap forward he gave more powers to people to rule themselves and started collectivization of agriculture on small scale
Students, these are the topic we have covered in this module. We have started our module with the entry of Western parts that how the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British have entered in China to get the commercial benefits. Then we have discussed the Taping and the Boxer Rebellions, which were the first rebellions in the Chinese history to get independence. Then we have discussed the revolution of 1911. Then we have discussed the rule of uh, Yuan Shikai, who established the strong KMT rule in China. We have discussed that how Japan declared that China was a protectorate state and how the KMT and the communists strongly fought against the Japanese government. Then we have discussed the civil war between the Kuomintang party and the communist. The Kuomintang were led by Chiang Kai-shek and the communist were led by Mao Zedong. We have discussed Chiang Kai-shek era that how he wanted to end communist so he started urging that is executing the communist leaders. Then we have discussed long march of the communist and this long march was led by Mao Zedong. Then we have discussed that uh, Chiang Kai-shek has to retreat because of uh, Japan's attack on China. The Chinese army or the KMT army had already become weak. So communist got easy victory over KMT party because many of the leaders of the KMT party were corrupt, including Chiang Kai-shek. Then, after defeating Chiang Kai-shek, the communists set up their own government, a republican form of government in China. It was given the name of National People's Republic of China. And then we have discussed that this government, the communist government, started many policies in order to reconstruct the Chinese economy, they have given more importance to the agriculture sector. They gave more importance to the small-scale industries. They started 100 flower campaign where the, any person can criticize the wrong policies of the communist government. And then later on, Mao Zedong ended this and started with the political development. China was declared a communist state with having republican form of government and strong centralized government. In the economic sphere, in the economic sphere, many public welfare programs were adopted, where people were given employment, and uh, great leap forward was also introduced by Mao Zedong, by which people were given authority to start the collectivization of farms and to rule themselves at the local level. And finally, we have discussed the Cultural Revolution. It was started in China and it started to grow itself against communism. So finally, Mao Zedong curbed the Cultural Revolution in 1969. Students, these are the questions we have covered in this module. Who was the founder of Kuomintang Party of China? Who was Chiang Kai-shek? What was the Long March? Who was Mao Zedong? What was the great leap forward policy and what were the causes for the victory of communist over the Kuomintang? You can see a YouTube link on your screen. For more information on this topic, you can click this link and explore more on this topic. With the help of this explanation and internet, you are supposed to make the notes of this topic. We'll meet you in next session. Till then, have a nice day.